Today, I'm talking about high dollar portrait sales. What I mean by this is that you really can make money with portraits. I know too many photographers that they make a lot of money shooting weddings, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars, but then when it comes to the portrait size, they're only making a couple hundred dollars. But I want to reverse that because I think you can make a lot more money with portraits because of the frequency than you can with the weddings. Just to give you an idea, my average portrait sale for senior portraits is around $2,000. Family portraits is around $3,000. And that's over a lot of sessions. This isn't just a few. And I'm not just making this up. I got the receipts to prove it if you want to look at it. So it's real. So just a couple examples. Portrait session I just did in December. It was a referral. Great clients. They called me. They said, we want to take pictures in five days. All their family was coming in from out of town, out of the country. I had a limited day. I had a limited span of three days. We could take the pictures, bring them back to the studio, and present the photographs. They ended up spending close to $7,000, and they were so excited to do it. So just an example that family portraits, they want to spend money if you let them. Senior portraits. The, this customer came to me. They wanted to create something really unique and cool. They liked my approach to presenting artwork. They ended up spending a lot of money. So senior portraits, definitely possible. And I know a lot of people do families that maybe come from out of town, and it's really hard to get them into maybe a sales session. I'm telling you now, you really have to get them in. So this was a family. I flew out to Texas for a week. I had one client to live there. They, they lined me up with two other families that were interested in getting portraits done. Through my environment, the, the way I approach my sales, manage their expectations that they are going to be spending a lot of money. So we, have, we were able to shoot it and present it for all three families within that week, and they all spent about this much money. So it's definitely, definitely possible. First, I want to debunk a, a couple of myths about consumers and consumerism. First, most consumers are not accustomed to buying photography. They just don't do it very often. Some people, yes, they will do it for their kids when they have a baby, but most families, most seniors, they're just not used to buying artwork. So that is your advantage. They're not used to it. Um, most consumers do not think that they are buying artwork. They just think of them as slide uh, snapshots and portraits because that's the way most of the industry has treated it for the last 15, 20 years. Or, um, that's what they're, the, they're familiar with. They're familiar with buying portraits. You need to sell them artwork. Whether you believe your, art, your photographs are art or not, just tell them. and they'll, It's a different mental perception. They think that online sales is easy and convenient. It is not easy for them, nor is it convenient. And it's really not convenient for you because you're throwing your money down the toilet when you present your, your, your galleries online. They really don't, when they look at a menu, they're not familiar with seeing so many options. If you have a couple pages like I do that we'll kind of go through, you really need to help them with the price sheet. So emailing it is great, but being able to walk them through it in person before you email it, or if you want to give them a printed copy, it's designed to get them to spend more money. That's the sole purpose. So we'll be talking about pretty price sheets and stuff like that. And lastly, they think $2,000 on a portrait session is just too much to spend. Probably because six months ago, maybe they got portraits done, they spent $300, and that's what they're accustomed to doing. So you need to break down that barrier from the get-go that $2,000 is not a lot of money to spend on portraits. You need to tell them that's what you're going to spend, and you're going to love spending it. And, and when they do, they're like, wow, this was awesome. Thank you so much. Another myth, mainly about photographers, is people feel like they have to produce something so awesome to be worth the dollar that they're asking, and it's not true. They're not used to buying and seeing photography, so they don't know what's good or excellent or amazing. So your work doesn't really matter. If it's good, you can still sell it. So don't, don't feel bad if if you're charging less and you feel like your work isn't good, just, just raise the price, find a way to do it, and you can, you can still charge for it. So your work really is not a barometer of how much you can earn for your portrait sessions. Um, 
your work should, it could it reinforce your brand and, and the way you present it, but it doesn't have to be the qualifier. And definitely if you're confident in how you present it, you're confident in how you communicate it to them, they will see that and they will, they will react to it positively financially. So the first step, in my opinion, is you really need to plant the seed, the seed that they are going to spend money. And that comes from the very first step, the very first time they see your artwork, whether that's on your website or they're at a friend's house and they saw their portraits on the wall, they need to, they need to get a feel that this is gonna cost them something. Because the sooner they get that in their head, the sooner they can continue to justify themselves that, hey, it's okay, $800, not so bad. Okay, $1,200, not so bad. They're going to convince themselves over time. It's not going to be instant, unless you're working with really wealthy people that $6,000 really isn't a lot of money to them. But to a lot of people, most of my customers, they're not the really wealthy people, but they're going to spend that much if you plant this seed and let it, let it kind of grow inside them. So if I go to your website and the first price that I see, I see this a lot in my local market, is they'll have session one or package one, two, and three. It's 195, 250, and, and 325. If you tell them up, if that's the price they see up front, that's the price, that's the first price they're gonna grasp onto. And they're gonna remember that. And they're gonna, they're gonna expect based on what you told them, I'm only supposed to spend as maximum as $325. So I'm gonna probably find somewhere in the middle. Maybe they'll go a little more, but if that's how you're presenting it, they're likely going to spend that much. So if you're telling them, hey, package one is 195, package two is 250, a lot of people like to land in the middle because they don't want to feel too cheap and they don't want to feel like they, they broke the budget by spending your top package. So you need to present, present a large price and that don't, don't be scared by it because if you come in at a somewhat low point, I consider 800 kind of the low end of what I sell for senior pictures. Tell them that how much they can spend. So on my website, it literally says, customers will spend between $800 and $2,400, and some spend more. I don't want to cap them at $2,400. If they feel like they want to get 10 gallery wraps and bring them in the home and it costs $5,000, then awesome. I want to tell them that they're allowed to spend more than this $2,400, but you have to tell them that. Otherwise, they'll assume $800, $2,400 might be the maximum. I want, to, I want them to be comfortable with with spending more. And this is really just to not let them fixate on a price. 800, 2400 or more, they're not kind of fixating their brain on this, this dollar amount, this number that's gonna stick with them. I don't do a lot of education on my website of what that's gonna get them. I just want them to know that that's how much they're gonna spend. I will tell them, you know, this would include maybe some wall portraits, some albums, some invitations to send up for graduation, some prints for grandma and grandpa, something like that. I'm not going to give them details because I don't want them to analyze it. I don't want them to think left brains or whichever side of the brain that is. I want them to be emotionally attached to my work, but I want them to realize it's going to cost them at least this dollar amount. And once you get that, that's, that's, the, first, that's the first home run you're going to get. Second, you really need to sell or show them what you sell. This can be accomplished through photographs and a price sheet, but they need to feel it and experience it. They need to see, because I get a lot of people that say, oh, 16 by 20, that's huge. No, it's tiny. It's really small. So when they behold the big 16, the 40 by 60 on my wall, they're like, okay, that's not bad. And then the 30 by 40 looks smaller. I can attain that. That doesn't look too big in my home. And so, yes, you can take pictures, but when they come in and they pick up an album, they can feel it, they see, they can kind of get an idea, but they get to experience it. They come in like, oh my gosh, this is so cute, I have to have this. They need to convince themselves when they feel it and touch it. So I will walk through my whole price sheet, show them everything in the studio, walk them around the space, and then I'll ask them at the end, what would you like to create? And I want them to be emotionally attached to what they feel and they can see that they can achieve. If you don't show it, they're not gonna buy it, I promise you that. Very rarely you can describe something to them. You know, if you're doing some customized stuff and you can tell them, hey, this is what I would like to create for you, maybe they'll trust you and they'll just say, yes, let's do it, I trust you. But you re if you want to sell it, you have to show it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And if you're only showing two or three things, you're not going to get the dollar amount up there that you're really hoping for. 
maybe if you only show them very large wall portraits, like massive, and you're just selling those, maybe that's possible. But I think you need a, a good variety to show them what you would like to sell. So I sell a lot of stuff, you know, small stuff, very inexpensive stuff, medium range products, expensive and really expensive stuff. If you look at Apple, they're really good at what they do. And they have a product for just about every single price range from $50 all the way up to $3,000. They want to get you at whatever you feel comfortable spending and they offer a variety of stuff. So if I'm selling $2,000, it's not just a few 8x10s, it's not just one wall portrait. They're getting a large variety of things. So if, you're only, if you only offer a few things, it's not likely that you're gonna be selling a lot of stuff. So get a variety of things that you like, get samples, show it to them, and tell them to buy it. They will buy it, just tell them. You're gonna buy this, you're gonna love it, and they will do it. So you have expensive items. These are things I would consider attainable. They're, they're able to realistically afford it. And then you have really expensive items that make the expensive items not look so expensive. So when people start buying your really expensive items, that means you need another really, really expensive item to make the really expensive items not seem so expensive. Um, but you have to have it. The, if I sell a, a 40 by 60 for $1,300 and that 20 by 30 looks, looks so much more attainable than that 40 by 60, I feel like this $600 one is something I can afford and they will buy it. So you need really expensive items on your price sheet and then just tell them to buy it. It's magical, it works. Just tell them to do it and they will do it. So once you've planted the seed and you showed them what you want them to buy, we wanna water the seed. How do we reaffirm them and continue to, to punch away at them that, okay, you're gonna buy these things, you're gonna spend this amount of money. So this is why I insist on a in-person consultation, whether it's for senior or family portrait, they need to come to the studio. Oftentimes, I do get a lot of people coming out of town, whether it's for a family reunion, they all came in, and everyone's together, they want to get a family picture. I can't show them and get them in the studios. It's hard. But I will talk to them and describe them. I'll send them a, a PDF of my price sheet, and then I'll walk it through them. I, I don't want them to just receive it blindly and not understand what it is I'm doing or why I'm selling it. I'll walk them through it. But this is, this is why a consultation is very important is so you can introduce what you're doing, but also so they can come in and feel and experience what it is that you're selling. Again, I want them to be emotionally attached. I don't want to fix it on prices. It's the very last thing I talk about. I don't even say a price. I just walk them through. Here's, here's my uh, wall sizes. Here's the frame sizes. Here's the album sizes. I never discuss price. I just want them to see it and experience it and kind of start convincing themselves that they're going to buy it. If they have questions, um, price usually comes up during the sales session, but not, not really a whole lot during the consultation. And then the session fee. It's the very end of the process of the consultation. I want them to pay a session fee. I only charge $200. It's not a lot of money because I'm losing money on my session because it, my session is anywhere from three and a half to four hours. That does not cover my time, especially when I'm a paying assistant and my travel costs are associated with that. Purely the session fee is really there to commit them to the process. If they've spent money to, to start working with you, they're, it's much less likely that they're gonna walk away after the session, after they've seen a picture, that they're gonna walk away and just not come in and buy anything. So you need to get them somehow financially committed to, commit to, to finishing the process. I think a session fee is pretty easy. Most people are, are accustomed to paying that anyway. Whether you want to just charge them a deposit, it's totally up to you. But get them financially committed because they're less likely to walk away from the whole step. Um, something I do with, with, if they're coming from out of town and they want to reserve a, a date that's a Saturday that I know it's going to be demands, I will have an extra deposit. I'll, I'll have them pay a $600 deposit, 400 of that goes towards a package. But realistically, I'm just getting them to forget the money that they spent. So when they come in a month later for their pictures, they've kind of forgotten that they spent $600. So when they build up a package that's $3,000, they are kind of like, oh, I'm not sure that I can afford this. I can remind them, hey, we're taking $400 off this. Like, oh, okay, cool. Money spent now is money forgotten. So if, you, if they're comfortable paying up front, if they tell me, hey, I want package five and it's $3,000, okay, pay for it now. Because I can probably get them to spend more because they're forgetting about this money that they already spent. 
The session fee for me is always separate from the package. It does not go towards it. So make sure that's clear, whether it's on the website or in the consultation, that they know that this is just for my time to create your photographs, the touch-ups, whatever, so that they're not expecting, oh, I thought I paid $200. Does that go towards the package? Just make that very clear. And then the most important part, I think, is part of this planting the seed is you need to let it simmer. When they walk in and they and you and you show them everything you're selling and you want them to buy, three thousand dollars, it, it's gonna be a sticker shock. It could be. What they want might be much more expensive than they hope for. But mom needs to go home and snuggle up to dad and say, honey, I really, really want something. And she's convincing herself and she's convincing her husband as well. So let it simmer. Let them go home, let them mull it over. Let them accept that $3,000 is what they're going to spend because when they come back in, they'll be ready to spend it. You're not trying to upsell them. They've already reached this dollar amount in their mind of how much they're realistically going to spend for what they want and what you showed them. Good price sheets. I think they're important. I don't think they're crucial. Um, pretty is definitely very objective, so definitely make it cohesive to what your brand is and what your website looks like. So if you're emailing it or printing it, it's they kind of remember all these places that they that connected with you, whether it's Facebook or your your website and now in person. Make it just look like it belongs like all belongs all together. It needs to be really clear and really easy to understand. A lot of times we present packages and there's just a lot of crap in there, and it's hard for them to decide what's best for them. So just make it really easy. I don't do a lot of packages because they don't sell packages. Almost everyone buys a la carte, and I make it really easy to do that because everything's presented that way. Again, focus on presenting, um, presenting the product and not the price. We don't want the very first thing to see is the price. They want to see what it is that they're getting. Describe it, show a picture of it, and then price just becomes irrelevant. Um, incentives for higher package is always a good thing. Um, I'm not the best expert at how to package certain products to push people to higher amounts. But definitely do it that way. Don't make it so uh, cookie cutter where they can see, oh, this package has this album and it's worth this much and I can see the difference. But incentives, you know, they can work really well. Whether you have a product that's not even on your menu that they can't buy, but it's in package number four and they really like it, that's an incentive to push it to that one because they can't get it in the other ones. Um, like I said, I do everything a la carte. And you really, need to, you really need to make them feel comfortable that you're there to help them because they're not accustomed to doing this. They're, when they see I'm gonna be buying all these things, there's so many decisions on what to buy, let alone which pictures are gonna go with these products. So you need to help them understand that I'm gonna be here to help you. I'm the artist, I know what's gonna look good. I'll be here every step of the way to help you pick out pictures and everything else. It'll be so easy, you're gonna love it. And they're like, okay, cool. And then at the end, they do love it, they tell me that. So I'm going to show you a couple slides of the actual, some price lists, my, the current one that I'm using for um, senior portraits here. Nice fade in effect. So it's very clean, very simple. Um, it actually has a photograph of the different types of albums so they, they can remember when they go back to the studio what these look like, which ones they were, because I do have different types. Um, make it just very easy to read and understand. Um, I do sell canvas collections, uh, wall galleries, whatever you want to call it. So I show them what I want them to buy. I have the most expensive, which I want them to buy, and the, the least expensive is the most popular. So I'm, I'm presenting that in the photograph because I want them to think of that more and more as they flip through it. And then this is definitely something helpful so they realize, I put it kind of in context of how it would look in their home. I want them to realize that, the, and look how I named it. A 16 by 20 is small. I want them to realize it is small. And that the standard is what, the standard is what everyone buys. And a lot of people buy large because they don't think it's that large. But the miniature is 11 by 14. I tell them it does not belong on the wall by itself. If you want a miniature, it belongs in the collection. It belongs in a group of photographs presented as one final art piece. So how you name your products, gearing, pushing them towards which size you want or which, whichever, how you name it is, is pretty important too. So standard is 20 by 30, large is 30 by 40. Okay, it's working here. So 
this is why in-person presentations are just so crucial. If you put your images on, online, and maybe even if you gave them a, a due date, but your images are not gonna be available after two weeks, they don't get all of your help in helping them decide which sizes, which products, how it's gonna look in their home. They flip through a gallery of images that can be very slow and cumbersome, and then they have a list on the right or wherever that shows you can buy an eight by 10, stuff like that. It's just very frustrating for them. They'll flip through and then they'll, then they'll leave it. They'll come back to it, they'll leave it. They'll come back to it until they're finished. Your photos are like drugs. They want their picture taken and they want to look awesome. And when the session's over and I share an image on Facebook, they're, they're getting a high, they're loving it especially when all their peers and their friends are saying, oh my gosh, you look beautiful. You want to sell to them when they are at the peak of excitement. So they need to understand when they're coming into the presentation that this is the only time that they're gonna see their photographs. If they come in thinking, oh, we're gonna come back, oh, I'm gonna see these online afterwards and then make my purchase. No, they're not, they can't, they can't understand that. You need to tell that up front. Manage the expectation that they are going to be spending money when they come in. So if they, if they see them online and you present them in the gallery, they get their fix, all their friends commented on them, they got what they were looking for. They were excited, now they look beautiful, all their friends told them they did. I don't know if I need this 30 by 40 anymore. They're going to start convincing themselves to buy less and less the more time you give them. So putting them online, I just... I just don't think it's ever gonna work. So I do build, um, build up the hype through teasers. So normally for a senior portrait or family, once the pictures are taken, they're so excited, they had fun. I come home within two hours, I post up my favorite. And then it goes viral on Facebook. All our friends like it and comment and they're pumped. But they might not be coming in for another week or a week and a half or maybe even just a few days. So I'll kind of systematically um, present a few more. I never give more than two for a senior, but usually the day before, the morning of, I'm going to post up another one so they get pumped. They're so excited to come in. So when they come in, they're on that high again. They're ready to whip out the card and spend a lot of money. So a lot of people, they will have some sort of insecurity because they're not associated to doing this. They don't know how to do it. So they have a lot of doubts. They have a lot of concerns about how to do this right. They trust in you that you're gonna take a good photograph and that you'll, you'll deliver on that, but they wanna do it right. They don't wanna to spend too much money, but they also, they wanna get the right stuff. They don't wanna walk away and regret two months later, I wish I had gotten this. So, especially for family pictures, something that helps them because they know they want a large size. They know they want to get it. It's a signature piece in their home, but they don't know which size is best. And it's hard for them to visualize whether they come into the studio to see them. They're like, I'm not sure which size is best for me. So I love going to their home and I will take photographs or I'll, I'll even bring samples, but I'll take photographs because I will use these in the presentations. If I suggest a size, I think this size will look best. I'll bring my samples, I'll put it up on the wall and I'll ask them, what do you think? Do you feel comfortable with it? Does this look good? If, I, if they give me a definite confident answer, then I'll use that. I'll take the photograph, I'll superimpose it in Photoshop or I'll use ProSelect so that when they come into the presentation, there's no doubt in their mind that this is the right size. They'll know immediately, yep, that's the size. And that's the easiest one. They'll move on from there. Okay, let's start with the signature piece. Let's start with the one that you are most proud of. They buy it, well, let's move on. Or if they feel, they feel happy about it, they love it. Maybe they'll suggest some touch-ups or head swaps or whatever but they'll be comfortable with it and then they can move on. And the quicker you do it, the less thinking they'll be allowed to do. If you get, them, if you get it done quicker, don't let them think about it, help them out, they'll be likely to spend more money. So I bring my samples um, and I do show them lots of options. So I'll take photographs of their home. If I think uh, we captured a series of three portraits that I think would go great on that wall, take a photo of it and present it. It works, it's like magic, it's like cocaine again. They, they get their high and they're like, yep, this is perfect. Do it, they will love it. And sometimes if I know, I come to the home, I take photographs, 
And I know they want, they definitely want one for this wall, for this wall, one for the bedroom, and somewhere else. When they come into the sales session, I'll have it all presented and say, here's what we talked about. Just hand it to them. Don't give them the price. They can look at the price if they want. I just hand it to them. Are we comfortable with that? Yes. Awesome. Let's pick the images. So if you present them an estimate or a package or whatever, based on what you know they were interested in, it's, it's likely that they'll be comfortable with one or all or a few of them rather than trying to go through step by step and decide what it is that they want to purchase. So here's a couple photographs. Um, you can do this in ProSelect really well. I've kind of fallen away from using it because I prefer Lightroom just for a number of reasons. But um, So I'll go into their home, I'll take a photograph, I'll stick a, a ruler on the wall. That way I can go back into Photoshop, I know how long a uh, foot is, and I can adjust it for 30 by 40 or 20 by 30, and then I'll, pre I'll, I'll show them during the presentation, hey, here's the wall we talked about, here's your favorite photo, do we like it? And they're like, yes, we love it, let's get it. So the more photographs, if, if you have multiple rooms, then present the different options. It just makes it a whole lot easier because it's not really easy to go into their home and do the sales session. I have done those. Um, it does work if, you know, if they have a nice TV and it's a controlled environment, the kids aren't around, the dog's not barking. It's better to do in the studio because it is a controlled environment, but if you have to go to their home, then, then do it. That's how I was able to go to Texas and shoot these three families. They all spent $5,000 is because I brought samples, I shipped a big box of samples so I could show them the albums, the different sizes. And when I went to the home, I hooked it up to their TV and I was able to do the presentation right then and there and they never saw them online, they never did. They saw a few on Facebook, but that's about it. So go take pictures, you'll love it, go buy it. Okay, these are some things that you need, must resolve, they need to know this from the get-go. First, the, the presentation is the only way to view the photos. They're not gonna see it online, they're not gonna get hard proofs. If you wanna do proofs, you can. I've never had a system of that that worked. That's the only way they're gonna view them. It is also the first and the last time that they will see their photographs before they're being presented in their home, before I deliver them. You need to reassure them that it's not going to be posted online. This is something I repeat through the process because it's the most common thing. They want to know, are these going to post online? Yes, they will be. I'll post a few on Facebook, but that's it. So be positive about it, but tell them that they're not going to be online. And that you're not going to hold on to them forever. If they come in and they love their photos, I need more time. Or they, they place their package, they spend $2,000. What if, what if I come back in six months? Can I still get some more? I want to sell them to them, honestly. But if they come in and they know I, they can come back, they're not going to spend it. I don't want to be mean and like hold their image as hostage, but I want them to spend as much as they're comfortable spending. And if they spend a certain amount, if they spend $2,000 and say, yeah, come back. I'm happy with that amount. I'm happy I got their money and their sale. And if they want to spend more in the future, sure. Perfect. Not a problem. But I don't want them to think, $600 is a lot, and later down the road when they get more money, they're going to spend it because they never do. Ever, ever, ever. During the consultation, they need to know that all the decisions regards the sizes, how much, the quantities, everything, that's all going to be made during the presentation. And that there's not going to be another time to return and decide. A lot of people, they'll come in, they're unsure, it's natural. They'll want to come out, oh, can we come back in a few days, let me think about it. Then their high goes down the drain and they're not excited if they come back. So they need to know, you need to tell them that this is the time, we'll go through all the decisions and place your order. And that you're going to be there to help them make all these decisions. Um, a lot of times I'll hear the, this complaint that, oh, I want grandma to pick her own photo. It's natural, sometimes they want to pick it. The way I get around this is I tell them, let's, okay, we know we want an 8x10, let's just put the 8x10 and you can tell me which one you want later. But get them to buy it, get them to pay for it because they're likely not going to add it on later. Uh, reassure them that you're going to help, you're going to help them pick what's best for them, what's best for their home, and, um, and that you're not going to sell them anything they don't need. I, I tell them that. I'm like, I'm not here to, 
for I'm not here for my own purposes. I want you to have exactly what you need and nothing more. Make them feel comfortable about that. And you need to tell them this is fun and easy. Because when I get people calling from out of town, they're coming in for family portraits for a reunion. I tell them this is so easy. You will love me. You will you will thank me later because I made you come in and do this. Because the online sales, if I showed them online, it's just so difficult. You're not going to enjoy it, and they'll trust you. And and they're like, okay, that makes sense. This will be so much easier. I can get it all done in an hour instead of having to wait to call Aunt Susie and talk to my brother and talk to Grandma. You know, kind of help them understand that that's the pro that's what the process is going to be if they do it online, and it's going to be so much easier if they do come in. During the shoot, I will also help them be excited about it and reaffirm them that oh the album we looked at oh this is going to be so awesome this is the cover shot and all of a sudden like oh yeah that is perfect cover shot or like this is the shot that's going to go over the fireplace oh yeah that's cool so get them excited while you're taking the pictures that tell them that hey this is going to be perfect for some wallets or whatever you want to sell them tell them get it in their head that oh i remember this picture because when they see it during the presentation like oh hey there's the cover shot I need an album now because I have I have to have an album with a cover. And then at the very end, I always remind them because they will forget. I always remind them at the end of the session, here's your presentation date. Bring anyone that needs to come to make the decisions, whether that's just mom or mom and dad. They both need to be there. And then I tell them, that's when we're going to view the pictures for the first time. That's when you're going to decide. And that's when we place make all decisions in regards to what you want to purchase. Because they're going to forget. They will. Just reassure them. It's a very nice thing to do. And they're like, okay. And they get in their mind because in five days they're coming in to place the order. So when they come in, oftentimes I will pre-design certain products. If I know that they thought about it and they, they told me during the session, yeah, we like the album, we think it's cool, we're not sure, then I'll pre-design the cover with their name and their stuff. You know, so that when they come in, they can kind of see, get an idea of how their name's going to be, or I'll design a few pages, so they can get an idea like, oh, wow, this is cool, let's get it. Then, okay, what size do you want? What kind of paper? Etc. Make it as easy as possible as for them to decide what you want them to buy and what they want. Um, again, when you present it, you don't want them to think analytically, because when they do that, they're starting, they're trying to justify the price instead of justify this is what I want the most. This is what I really want. So get them away from the price and get them back towards how would this look in your home? Is this something you think is going to be great for you and your family? Get them back to the emotional side, less towards the price and analytical side. Um, presentation software, I used ProSelect for a long time. Um, I think their booth is over here. It's a way to present the photographs. The, some of the cool things about it is you can plug the photographs you take of their home into there. And it'll show you, you can show them what, what a 20 by 30 looks like, what a 30 by 40 or larger or whatever. Or a multiple, uh, like a wall gallery, you can show them on the wall magically what it's going to look like. Um, I use Lightroom. I find that it's faster. Um, it, it's easier to show all the photographs on the screen as thumbnails in case they just want to look at all of them. I just found it's faster, it's easier to use, it's more flexible. Um, but you know, try them out, you can get a trial on both of them and see which one fits for what you need. And at the end, always want to close the sale. I always, I'm always going to collect money up front. I don't want them to walk away without paying me some sort of money because they're then going to be financially, if, they're only, if they only feel comfortable with paying a part of it, then yes, you need to get a part of it so that they don't walk away and they felt like, okay, I've already spent $400, I need to finish it and get everything I want. So get a deposit. If they ask you, oh, do I owe everything right now? Yes. Tell them yes. They will think, okay, cool. That's what everyone does. Everyone pays up front. If they're really worried about it, and you can, you can tell like, oh, crap, what am I going to do? Offer, offer whatever payment plan is co comfortable for your studio. I do 50%. Say, okay, well, 50% is the minimum. That makes sure I can get it started. And that also tells them because I've started it, they can't really back out or they can't make changes. So get them started. I'm going to get started enough to pay 50%. When you come pick it up, the final balance is due. And then don't be, sh don't be shy to collect it. Whatever type of payment they want to pay, accept it. A lot of people don't accept credit cards. I think it's a little foolish. If they want to pay it, then pay it. People tend to spend more with credit cards anyway. If they want to pay in gold bars, I will take gold bars. That's fine. Just take their money and walk away. 
Um, one thing that off that helps me sell larger portraits or gallery uh, wall galleries is I'll tell them, hey, I'll come to your home and install it. If they don't want to do it, they feel like it's complicated. Hey, I'll come and do this. I love it. And then I get to present them, and then that's that's my favorite part is seeing their reaction to it in their home finally installed, and they they're just over the moon with them. And the last thing is we have to be confident about every step of the process. If they feel like you're unsure, you're afraid of your own policy on you have to come in, like, oh, really, yes, you have to come in, this is when we do it, then be confident. Present it to them, no ifs, ands, or buts, and they'll accept it. And that's the formula. There's a lot more you, you can do. We can talk about with price lists, but this is kind of this ecosystem that you need to create that they will spend money, tell them to spend it, but from the very beginning, they need to understand this. They need to manage their expectations on the website that they're going to spend this, and likely they will spend it. That's everything that I have. Anyone have any questions? I'm, I'm, I'll be here for another 10, 15 minutes. If you want to ask questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks to everyone coming. Thanks to Black River. They do some awesome stuff. Come around to the other side. Check out what they offer. They're the most kind, understanding, and acceptable group of individuals as a company that I've ever worked with. So if you're not working with them, they're awesome. Check out their stuff. Thanks, everyone.